Actually, while I'm thinking about it, probably time to do another dungeon. And I know just the one to do. It's definitely pirates. <laughs> oh, oh, this dungeon, right. By the onion, you're Dekubon. It's not like I've given you two other dungeon quests before. You couldn't have come at a better time. A friend of mine sent word that he needs a capable adventurer, you see, and I naturally thought of you. Who's this friend, you ask? Why, none other than Commander Rhino of the Yellow Jackets. He and I met back when I first started out as a culinarian, and we've been friends ever since. And he wrote, I'd appreciate if you make him a visit and inquire as to what he needs doing. You'll find him in the Coral Tower near the Yellow Jackets. Coral Tower. Oh, that would be the Marauders Guild in Limsa, right. Yep. Back here with the Marauders. Good morrow to you, Dekumon. How timely. There is something I would ask of you. Ah, but where are my manners? Is the art you require? Here at Blues and Gold's behest, you say? Ha! That he should send you of all people is a stroke of good fortune indeed. Permit me to apprise you of the situation. You would doubtless recall driving the Serpent Reavers out of Sastasha. Yeah, actually I do. The very first dungeon of the game. Well, despite our best efforts to keep the place secure, I regret to inform you that it has been occupied by pirates. Pirates, I say, though eyewitnesses claim that they seem to kin more to fiends than from the briny depths. To be frank, we are not wholly certain what it is we are dealing with. I dispatched a party of adventurers to identify and eliminate the threat, but it would seem their courage failed them. But were they not you, my friend? You will fare better against whatever awaits within Sestasha, of that I have no doubt. If you would be willing to assist us, pay report to De Persia, who stands guard by the entrance to the caverns. So we're going all the way back to the very first dungeon of the game, and I imagine it's going to be a little bit tougher this time. Hmm. Actually, I have a couple people sitting out here. Wonder if they're in queue for the normal mode or the hard mode. Ah, it's you! I take it you mean to help us again? Wonderful! You see those adventures yonder? We sent them in first, but it soon became clear they were unequal to the task. By my count, they lasted just under a minute inside before staggering back out, sucking in air like fish out of water. As such, we're no closer to ascertaining the nature of the threat, let alone eliminating it. You'll be going in blind, I know, but you've purged Astasha before, and I'm certain that you can repeat the feat. Enter whenever you're ready. I look forward to hearing of your success. There we go, Sestasha hard. <laughs> uh, I remember this dungeon when it first came out. This was a fun one. All right, Sestasha hard. There we are. Tucked deep inside the dank caverns of the Sestasha Sea Grot, there is a secret port said to have been built by the pirate Mistbeard. In the years following the calamity, the notorious Serpent Reavers claimed it as their lair until the cutthroats were vanquished by a band of dauntless adventurers, including yours truly, of course. The place subsequently came under control of laments and authorities, who maintained a security presence within. Alas, that control did not last, for an unknown faction has arisen, seemingly from the briny depths, and overwhelmed the occupying Yellow Jackets. Opinion is divided over the identity of these foes. Some say that they are pirates, while others swear that they are fiends. Yet it does not take a scholar to see that these two things need not be mutually exclusive. Ooh, average item level of 80 this time. Whoa. Is this still Sestasha? That's a little brighter than it was before. I gotta be honest though, I really gotta stop doing these queues in the middle of the night. That took like a good 30 minutes to get a party. Filthy intruders, filthy intruders, squawk! <laughs> Ah, oh joy. What are we looking at? Old school, oh, I have another red mage working with me. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Oh, we are fat pulling this hard. We are fat pulling this hard and I really should use their arrow too couple times because I man, my man is way out of balance huh so yeah now we're dealing with the drowned type of enemies which are what's the best way to describe these guys all right they're drowned and they've all been brought back by our good pain in the ass Leviathan yeah every one of these drowned guys is someone who is basically a Leviathan thrall 
And that is a problem because, you know, well, this dungeon did come out after Leviathan, so it does make some sense. Jesus. Look at this guy. He's a freaking rock. He's huge. He's like, what? Yeah, he's got to be a good 12 feet tall almost. Okay, I can barely get any casts in. Can we slow down just a touch? All right. Well, I guess I'm going to have to do some AoE in again. We are going to blitz through this dungeon. Uh, I ran out of shit to hit. Almost got a full mana bar. Almost. Anyway, somebody needs to run up there, hit the drainage pump, and we are going to lower the water in this area significantly. Watch this. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is a cool effect. It really is a cool effect. And we get to the first boss. Carlobos! Now this guy is actually kind of dangerous if you're doing this at level. Or if your healer's incompetent. So be ready for that. The big thing you want to watch out for is the dots. That dot right there. If you're the healer, your job is to cleanse that off as fast as you can. And this is why. Tail screw! Watch his health, see? Tail screw drops you to 1% of your maximum health. And if you've got that dot on you, the dot ticks and you die pretty much instantly. So, yeah. If your healer's not on the ball, this fight becomes a bit of a bitch. Uh, you know what? I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna scoop the prey marker off the uh, the boss here, so he stuns me instead of the tank. So the tank can stun tail cr tail screw, which is kind of fun little gag you can do. Although most tanks don't care. Oh joy, and the tank and the guy just got a nice big old damage buff and a haste buff on top of that. And here comes a buttload of dots. Yep. Yeah, I think he dotted three, everyone but the tank, and the tank just got stunned. So who's gonna get screwed? Uh, he's going for the healer, it looks like. Yep. The healer. But it doesn't matter. You're toast. Thank you. Good night. <sighs> Honestly, this is probably one of the more challenging bosses we've seen up to this point. I know we made that look really easy, but at level, that guy was a legitimate challenge. Especially for the first boss of a dungeon. Of course, honestly, I think the second boss of this dungeon is still pretty challenging if you have the wrong group. Or if people are just not paying attention. Doubly so when people uh, didn't know how to deal with his mechanics at the very beginning when he first came out. Yeah, I know. I'm going to burn all my damn mana here. Come on. There we go. Hit these guys with the old AoEs. <laughs> oh, the crabs, they're marching. Take him out. Can I get to the other crab? Possibly. No. Nope. Other crab's dead. Actually gonna sprint so I can actually make it up here. <laughs> okay, this is actually kind of like a mini boss encounter almost. These brines, yeah, they explode when they die, but if they reach the minion in the center here, she will heal and she will heal a lot. So what you wanna do is kill her fast. And a lot of times you're gonna do that with AOEs like we did there. So when the brines take damage, they explode and don't heal her because healing her is really annoying. Oh, my man is way out of balance again. The downside of doing this is every time I yap, it messes up my balance because I'm not paying attention to what I should be doing. Yeah, so watch. We'll do AOEs to these guys and pop these brines or she'll get healed because I think some of the brines might actually reach her. Nope. 
The downside, of course, is the simple fact that we take all the lovely explosion damage. There we go. And with her gone, the brine stops spawning. So we don't have to do anything brine related for the two small fry here. The drowned courtesans, which basically look like melusines from the binding coil. And I think there is nothing standing between us and the second boss, but a random treasure chest and a random door. Well, I'll be damned. Hey guys, remember Captain Madison from the very first dungeon? He's looking a little beefier now, isn't he? Ah, oh, my proc fell off, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, this is Captain Madison. Oh, and here comes his mechanic. He's targeting me with it. Watch his attack stacks up, oh, there it goes. So when he does that little shooting mechanic, he will continue to gain damage stacks. And he's shooting me again. Okay. He will continue to gain damage stacks until he takes enough damage to make him miss. And in the meantime, he also summons all the freaking minions that he can want. And damn, the AoEs were doing good damage. He kill hauled me. <laughs> And if you're not on the ball or your DPS sucks, he can outright kill you with enough shots. You see, actually starting with four or five stacks at time. Oh, and this is the part where this gets a little annoying. Oh, I missed that. These fucking captain slaves are so annoying because when they actually get to you, they grab you and you can't move. And when you see that line, I saw this. He just runs off like a little bitch. I can't cancel this cast. I can't cancel the cast. I'm targeting the wrong thing there. God dang. There we go. And of course, Captain Morgan gets away. Like he always does. Running away like a little bitch. All that loot that I don't really need, thankfully. Moving, where are we going? You know, like, unlike the normal Satasha, this one's a little bit more linear. There didn't seem to be the big, uh, open area in the middle of it, I think. That area was actually converted into what we just had for the boss arena. Because this stuff is looking very familiar at this point. Almost got these guys. There we go. Oh, remapping the realms. Sastasha, we must be near the end. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the last big open area before the final boss in the original dungeon. Which means it's the big open area before the final boss in this dungeon. Alright, are we doing the big, uh... Oh, I'm gonna be maxed on mana. Yeah, he is. He's fat pulling. God, we're gonna clear this dungeon in record time. Holy cow. Yeah, that crowd. I wish I had my AoE mana spenders, but I don't. On the plus side, I will finish with maximum mana going into the final boss here. Oh, oh, the tank and healer got rocked there. I'm not sure what just happened. Uh-oh. Tank's down. The tank is down. Okay, fine. I'll blow my man on this guy, trying to get him dead. <sighs> okay. Yeah, you wanna... You're gonna wanna res the healer. You're gonna wanna res the healer. Tr or not the healer. Res the tank. Seriously, res the tank. Please res the tank. Thank you. Because holy spitballs, here comes the fucking enemy cavalry. Yeah, this, uh, the first mate here, he tends to summon a lot of these damn powder monkeys. Now, they don't have a lot of health, but holy cow, here comes the whole freaking army of them. Oh, 
Oh yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them in there. This is why we just AOE all this down. There. Yeah! And I just saw that. I saw that paladin, you popped hallowed ground. What a waste. Oh, there's the captain again. Here's a half decent look at him. Oh. Hi, Davy Jones. Release the Kraken! Yeah. <laughs> he flew! Uh-oh. <laughs> there goes the parrot. Uh, but yeah, guys. Remember that Kraken from Hullbreaker Isle that ran away instead of giving us a proper boss fight? Now we get a proper boss fight. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, the Kraken is the fight, and he still comes with all the bloody tentacles! And these things need to go. Trust me, they have to go. You cannot let these things survive. The tentacles, however, are not that big of a deal. The one grabbing me, however, is an annoyance. Come on, get it out of your system. There we go, you son of a bitch! And every time he throws you, he always throws you right into the damn ink jets. Uh, but it is critical you take out the, uh, the tentacles. Or the, the arms, I should say. Yeah, the Kraken cannot bring its arms to bear against you. That's the main reason you want to take these out. Um, every one of these times he spawns the arms is basically a mini DPS check. If you don't take out the tent, the arms fast enough, I keep saying tentacles, but it's these, the, the, the Kraken's arms. If you don't take those out fast enough, he will hit you with a really nasty mechanic. I'm gonna get thrown again? You son of a bitch. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, just, just throw me into the fucking ink giant again. Sure, why not? Great. Blind again. Blind as a bat. And he just respawned them, didn't he? Yes, he did. I think this time he actually spawned all four Kraken's arms. The first two times he only spawned two of them apiece, so we do have to do a little more work. But not much. Also, this time I'm not getting grabbed. I'm staying as far away from those stupid tentacles as I can. There we go, there's that one. We got them all, we got them all. You know what, taking that one out just because I can. Wasted that dual cast on a second jolt. I don't care. Oh, nope. No, you're not ink blotting me. Won't let it happen. Dodging that. <laughs> now, if you're melee, the best place to stand for this guy is actually to the sides. Because they're safe from that ink jet. There it is. Stranger Tides. That's the, uh, that's the arm check. If you don't have the arms broken before he does that, you're going to get nailed with some big damage. And yeah, okay. This part is slightly different. You see how the arms have a damage buff on them? This is basically just survive. Just avoid the arms and survive. You actually don't have to break the arms in this set. So just focus on the Kraken. Eventually he'll retreat the arms and you can go to town on him. Or I could do this. Where's my eye? There's my body. There it is. I'm gonna blast you with the meteor rain. <laughs> yeah, that did some good damage there. Uh oh, his arms are back up. Oh uh, no, not again! Again with the grab. He's gonna. I'm, he's gonna die while I'm grabbed. Yep. I knew it. I knew he would die while I'm in the middle of that stupid grab animation. Bye, Kraken! You got to be a boss twice, so you should be proud of that. <laughs> the other Red Mage is a pretty close to my same outfit. <laughs> and there we are! Done cleaned out the pirates again. Oh! The parrot dropped. Oh! <laughs> Nine! Nine! You dick game. <laughs> I never have good luck rolling for the minions. <sighs> yeah, um, a lot of dungeons will drop minions in certain chests. 
and my luck for getting those is atrocious. Oh, we actually have more to this quest. Ah, you returned! Tell me, were you able to identify our intruders? Uh, yeah, we had uh, Leviathan thralls. Men who looked like jellyfish? And you say they were Captain Madison and his crew? That is decidedly odd, but I know better than to doubt you. I will have the bodies retrieved for study, that we might better be prepared to face such enemies in the future. Your work here is done, friend. Pray make your way to Alport. Commodore Rayner awaits near there, and will doubtless be glad of a first-hand account. Oh, I don't have to go all the way back to Limsa? Wow. Spare me the trip, thanks. Alright, dude. Let's see if you have anything- Oh, I was not expecting a cutscene. I've already received word of your success. You do not disappoint, Dekumon. Sir, a body has arrived for inspection. <laughs> a body just phased in for inspection. Oh. Big nasty brute here. This... This thing used to be a man? Gods be good, how did this happen? A sight to turn the stomach. Tis well I hadn't eaten. Oh. Hi. Um... My la- My lady, thank you for granting us your valuable time and expertise. Commodore, allow me to introduce Miss Sena, a foremost among the celebrated Professor Lambrain's students. Let us not stand on ceremony. Friends, this man's unusual form can be attributed, I believe, to the excess absorption of water aspected ether. A living being can only absorb a certain quantity of ether before suffering adverse effects. To be altered so drastically requires a fatal dose, yet our subject here lived long enough to be struck down. A most peculiar case indeed. I have heard that a primal creates thralls by showering mortals with its own ether. Could this be an extension of that process? I dare say you have struck the mark, Commodore. If being exposed once to a primal's ether is enough to corrupt the mind, it is plausible that repeated exposure corrupts the flesh. Madison and his crew had failed to hold Sestasha for their Sahagan overlords, and I suspect that this was their punishment. The fishback's depravity knows no bounds. To think that creatures capable of such cruelty lurk nearby. I shan't get another wink of sleep while I am here. Have no fear, my lady. My yellow jackets are sworn to protect the airport and her denizens, and in light of recent developments, you may be certain that we will redouble our vigilance. Your words give me heart, Commodore. And as previously agreed upon, by way of payment for my services, I shall hold on to this specimen for my research. <laughs> specimen, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. I guess that's what we'll call that. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave this one here for now. Uh, feels good to be back in the recording chair, even if it is trying to roast me out here right now. Ugh. But... If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and favorite, and subscribe to join me because odds are good, I'm gonna be taking on Shiva in the next episode. So, see you guys then.